All right, I'm honestly sick and tired of it. Like, I don't know how to say this any nice way, but utilizing tools nowadays is just so hard. Like I train people all the time. I, I use Loom. I don't know if you guys heard of it. It's a great tool, but it is lacking something fundamental. The most fundamental thing that it's lacking is essentially a API. I get it. Security is a thing. However, when I look up Loom API and I find out that essentially there's no real API, I think to myself, what can I do to get this amazing, awesome, stupendous tutorial that I gave my team members inside of a training that I can talk to, right? I can ask questions and show them how things work without needing for them to watch a video. Uh, I know, I know what to do. Uh, we can use Text Cortex, one of my favorite tools and the tool that powers Rice Productive through its AI needs. Thank you to Text Cortex for sponsoring this video. So for those of you who are like me, who run a company or are simply in charge of people or have trained people on one thing, you probably know that Loom is a great tool. And honestly, if you're not using Loom or anything that can record this easily and send things, you're messing out. But it is always nice for workflows to be known by the chatbot that you're working with or the AI that you're working with. So for me, Text Cortex is the tool. And the nice thing about Text Cortex is it's not just a chat, it's also a product that has personas, templates, and different things like that. And my favorite thing is knowledge bases that it has. Whereas you can see, I have a bunch of different knowledge bases of categories. We have things like newsletters, tutorials, we got general SOPs, and this is where we have the trainings for our company in there. This explains to people how the different things in our processes work. However, getting something like this in here, you know, you'd have to take a new file, press the add file button, grab URLs, go through the whole process of adding things. It's It takes a little bit of time, especially when you're dealing with a loom and you might have to copy the transcript and say, hey, can you please summarize this and give a detailed breakdown? Actually, can you be more detailed? Clean it up a little bit. I like this formatting, thanks. Then, oh, let's open up a Google Drive maybe, let's open up a PDF, save it as a PDF, then add it to here. You know, that's a whole, it's a whole click, click, click process. However, lucky for you, I am a nerd and nerd in a good way because I have created an automation that takes it from zero to trained immediately. So how does this work? In Notion, there's something called webhooks. And if I open up this, you'll see we have SOPs here, okay? So SOPs are awesome for a couple different reasons. So basically something that I can do is add a new SOP to my system and I can call it something like the name that I've made the loom, file cleanup and maintenance, right? And instead of having to go through a whole process, I can have it follow this entire step-by-step -step make.com workflow, which first takes a transcript and runs a really nice prompt, which basically tells it to transform an SOP training into a comprehensive structured knowledge document optimized for RAG retrieval. RAG retrieval is essentially real-time augmented generation, I believe, or retrieval augmented generation, AKA RAG. And it's a framework that enhances the accuracy and relevance of large language models responses by incorporating information retrieval from an external knowledge source before generating text. So it basically adds in the knowledge from a PDF like the one we're gonna be creating in this video to the context before it spits out its answer instead of a product like Text Cortex, ChatGPT, or otherwise. So real quick, I'll just show you, it says this is the resource link, the Notion link, the transcripts, it's the name of the procedure, give a procedure overview, give key procedural steps, who's the primary process owner, what are their compliance requirements, all the things you'd see inside of ASOP. It then takes the text from the ChatGPT prompt and then gives it a name, adds the file, content from the ChatGPT response. There's a download module so I can convert it into a PDF from that Google Doc, as those are just ingested a little bit better into Text Cortex, where I use a upload a file module from Text Cortex and map the downloaded Google Drive file. And then I simply copy the knowledge base ID and paste it out here. And then at the end of the process, I add a check mark that it's added to the knowledge base. So in order to do this, I literally need to do three things, right? I've already added the name, I've added the link, now let's copy the transcripts, paste, and I guess the fourth thing, crazy, press the add to knowledge base button. And you'll see that if I go into 
make.com, it's going to very, very quickly add this to the system. It's been only 30 seconds and it's already gotten a response and it's going to upload the text cortex file and you'll see in real time, if I go over here, back and forth, look at that, refresh. What is this magic? What is this wizardry? File cleanup and maintenance, look at that. Awesome, I can even open it up in a new tab and you'll see the file is there. So this is the SOP training documentation, it's for file cleanup and maintenance. The loom link is here, the purpose, what are the procedural steps? Okay, cool. So now what I can do is I can go to chat, which for Text Cortex, you can interact with whatever your favorite chat engine model is. You got Claude, Grok, Grok2 with Vision, Gemini, ChatGPT, and then you have the reasoning models of all the different ones as well. And you have the fast models like Claude Haiku and GPT-40 Mini. So let's try this out. If I, I like 3.7 Sonnet the most. So let's go to general SOPs and let's ask, can you give me a breakdown of the file cleanup and maintenance process. Also, can I have the Loom recording link and Notion link, please? Always gotta be nice to the AI, just in case. Okay, so it gives me this detailed breakdown and you can see these little numbers are showcasing from the file, you know, that it grabbed it. And then even here, it's cool. It showcases where it grabbed it from with yellow text a lot of the time, which I think is cool. But you can see it shows the purpose to ensure regular maintenance and accuracy of file statuses and storage with a focus on aligning Notion and frame statuses and ensuring correct linkage of Google Drive files. The process involves checking and updating file statuses, downloading content to Google Drive, and verifying internal and external media content and thumbnails. Okay, cool. Total breakdown of what was in there. And then if I click this, guess what? Brings me to the link. So rather than somebody texting me or sending me a message on Slack, like, hey, how do I do that cleanup task? Um, yeah, ask the chat. There's also the hyperlink to the training. Yeah, I don't gotta train you more than once. I want to help you out if I can, but obviously if I went through a whole 30 minute training, you can ask an AI. Actually, it's only almost 40 minutes. Jeez, I talk a lot, if you couldn't tell. But I talk less with Text Cortex and I just ask more questions. It's a really great tool. I like the fact that I can switch between models with ease, the knowledge bases, the personas, all of these things make my life so much better. So if you're looking for a AI tool, that can enhance what you're doing on a daily basis, please check out Text Cortex, use my affiliate link, and thank them, like I'm thanking them, for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.